Spooky greetings everybody and welcome to my review of WCW's Halloween Havoc 1997. This is sponsored by Slim Jim and they like to call it Slim Jim's Halloween Havoc throughout the event. This is hosted by Tony Schiavone, Bobby the Brain Heenan, and the American Dream Dusty Rhodes. Those three are all strong commentary. I love the entrance area including the spooky fancy guy as the logo. It's really cool and really gets in the Halloween spirit. And this event doesn't really have certain gimmicky matches, but that's not a bad thing. Some wrestling fans don't care about that stuff, and sometimes it can be truly awful. But this event, there are solid wrestling matches across the board. First match on the event is Yuji Nagata versus Ultimo Dragon. I grew up watching wrestling, and I loved Ultimo Dragon as a kid, so this was a treat to see again. Um, pretty fast-paced match, lots of quick maneuvers from Dragon. Dragon loses via submission by Nagata, and this is a perfectly fine opening match. Already, this is among one of the better matches out of a lot of the other Halloween Havoc matches. Halloween Havoc over a number of years has had some real snoozers to me. Second is Gito versus Chris Jericho. Both of these guys have great chemistry in the ring. Both bring in some explosive maneuvers in this match. Jericho tries a Frankensteiner off the top rope, but Guido prevents it. Guido doesn't get a lot of cool spots, unfortunately. Most of the spotlight is on Chris in this match. Chris Jericho does a double powerbomb and then wins by submission. This is a fun match. It's quick and it's fast paced and it's pretty explosive. And there's not much else to say about this match, but you'll love to see quick, fast matches like this. And I'm glad that this event had a match like this. Third on the card is arguably what put Rey Mysterio on the map. He went by the name Rey Mysterio Jr. here. This is known arguably as one of the best Halloween Havoc matches ever. Rey Mysterio takes on the great Eddie Guerrero for the WCW Cruiserweight Championship. Eddie has control over Ray for a good amount of this match, but Ray still puts up a good fight regardless. Eddie tries to remove Ray's mask at one point and rips part of it. Ray does an amazing backflip into a DDT onto Eddie. Eddie runs his nuts into the ring post. Ray goes off the top rope to the outside onto Eddie. Couple head scissor moves from Ray. Somersault over the top rope onto Eddie. Ray really pulls out all the stops. Eddie powerbombs Ray into a pin, but Ray kicks out. Eddie goes face first into the turnbuckle. Eddie reverses Ray's springboard into a backbreaker. Ray reverses a move from Eddie off the top rope and pins Eddie for the win and wins the Cruiserweight Championship. Now, I love this match. It practically did steal the show for me. A lot of awesome spots in this match. Luckily, there is still some great stuff left on this event, but... Honestly, this may have been my favorite match of the event, and it probably might be my favorite Halloween Havoc match ever. Next, you have a quick backstage thing with Hulk Hogan and Eric Bischoff giving an NWO promo. Hogan is scared <laughs> of Sting and does not want to be in the main event if he knows that Sting is going to show up. And so there's a good amount of struggle for you know, backstage promos, like in between with this event, if Hulk Hogan is actually going to do the main event or not. And NWO is like trying to, you know, have leverage over the company of WCW. But of course, you're going to have the main event. Next up is Steve McMichael versus Alex Wright. Not a bad match at all either. I would say this one could be lost in the mix of Halloween Havoc 1997. It's not super memorable, but both still put on a good match. Goldberg intercepts the match and gives Steve McMichael a jackhammer, and Alex Wright gets the pin for the win. After that, Goldberg gives Alex a beatdown and then leaves in typical Goldberg fashion. Next, we have another NWO promo with Macho Man Randy Savage backstage. Most of this Halloween Havoc event, I would say if there is a complaint to be had, is NWO is splattered all through this event. But this was at the height of the NWO with that faction, and they practically took over WCW. And I'm pretty sure if this faction didn't exist for WCW, the whole Monday Night Wars thing with WWE and WCW probably wouldn't have really been much of a thing. But the NWO was inescapable if you watched wrestling. Next up is Disco Inferno versus Jacqueline. Now this was among one of the more interesting matches of the event and could have been controversial, but surprisingly wasn't, at least to me. Disco Inferno did not want to fight Jacqueline, but she wanted to fight Disco Inferno. A lot of the match was Disco Inferno avoiding Jacqueline. 
but Disco didn't want to lose either. Disco Inferno does a few moves on Jacqueline, but nothing really violent. An arm drag, a surprise roll up. This match kept my interest despite Disco consistently running away. Disco almost sneaked a pin on Jacqueline, but Jacqueline kicked out. Jacqueline finally had enough and kicks a little Disco Inferno ass and pins him for the three count. Jacqueline wins. Now this was WCW, but I feel like if this was the Attitude Era of the WWE, they probably would have had Disco Inferno wail on Jacqueline for a while and win, but that didn't happen, of course. The Attitude Era truly had some shaky territory. I feel WCW did the best possible angle they could with this match without it being controversial, so no harm done here. Next is Kurt Henning versus Ric Flair for the US Heavyweight Championship. Good match here too. Ric Flair is fueled by vengeance in this match and it definitely comes through. Kurt Henning came out wearing Ric Flair's robe. Ric Flair clearly doesn't care about winning the title because he DQs himself by wrapping the championship belt around Kurt's face while he's hanging upside down from the top rope and Rick gives Kurt a championship boot sandwich. Then proceeds to punch a referee. Look out, Rick is pissed. A bunch of refs and additional people run out to stop Rick from giving Kurt even more of a beatdown. Now, normally a DQ finish bothers me in a title match, but this one surprisingly doesn't that much. You can tell that they were going more for a story angle than with how Ric Flair is pissed and hates the NWO. This finish actually worked for me. The match itself too was decent, so I can't complain much. Next, you had Larry Zabisco as a special guest referee for the next match where Scott Hall with six faces Lex Luger. This is probably the most slow paced match of the event. A lot of holds. It does pick up a lot towards the end, however. Eric Bischoff and Six interfere. Scott Hall pins Lex and wins. Larry, special guest referee, he gets pissed and he looks at the replay and demands Scott Hall get back in the ring because he clearly didn't win. Scott Hall throws a tantrum at Larry. Six decides to be an ass and nail Larry from behind. Then Scott Hall and Six and Eric Bischoff collectively decide to be ass beat up Larry and Lex to be DQ'd for the match. Also, with this match, despite the disqualification, I enjoyed this match a good bit. A little slow on the first half, but I loved how it ramped up at the end, and the NWO's silly antics at the end actually worked for me, so once again, solid match. Getting towards the end of the event, we have Macho Man versus Diamond Dallas Page in a sudden death match. So this is basically referred to nowadays as a last man standing match. Beat up your opponent to incapacitate them basically, and if they don't get up to their feet by the count of 10 from the referee, then the person standing is the winner. And the match goes all over the arena. They're thrown into the barricade several times. Diamond Dallas Page whips Savage into a tombstone at the entrance area and then slams him into one as well. Truly some Halloween havoc here. Savage steals a camera from the cameraman and DDP kicks the camera into Savage's face. Savage does the elbow drop onto DDP. Both of them get up before 10. Savage gives DDP the low blow. Fake Sting comes out and hits DDP with a baseball bat and DDP can't get up by the count of 10. So Macho Man wins and he is a sore winner because he therefore goes to attack DDP even more to add insult to injury and DDP has to be stretchered out of the arena. And finally for our main event, we had Michael Buffer come out and hype up the crowd of course for the main event. Our main event is Hollywood Hogan facing Rowdy Roddy Piper in a steel cage match. So Piper launches a barrage of attacks on Hogan. Hogan retaliates and escapes the cage and finds not Sting or a fake Sting near the entrance and freaks out. Piper pulls Hogan back into the ring. Hogan is always trying to run. Both Hogan and Piper climb the cage for a bit and then brawl it out some ringside. Hogan whips Piper with his belt and attempts to climb out of the cage. The not sting or fake sting prevents him from leaving. Other spooky stings come forth to spook Hogan. Macho Man comes out to help and jumps off the top of the cage and misses Piper. Piper puts Hogan in a sleeper hold and then passes out. So Piper wins and more chaos ensues after with many different stings and the NWO brawling it out. Hogan cuffs Piper to the cage. A supposed fan runs into the cage to try and help, but Hogan and Savage beat him up as Halloween Havoc 1997 comes to an end. 
So kind of an awkward end to the chaos, but I mean, it's called Halloween Havoc, so at least it ended on a very <laughs> crazy, hectic note. But my general final thoughts, some shows as a whole haven't been among the best pay-per-views, I will say. Um, the 1989 and 1990 Halloween Havocs are pretty good ones, though. I have reviews of those on the channel if you'd like to check them out. But Halloween Havoc 1997 is by far among the best I've seen. Even the worst match of the evening is still good to me. My favorite matches were definitely Eddie Guerrero versus Rey Mysterio Jr. match and Macho Man versus Diamond Dallas Page match. But still, every match was solid and entertaining. I obviously recommend this one highly. If you've never seen a Halloween Havoc, watch this one first. You're gonna be spoiled because I've watched about five or six of these now, and this is easily top tier for me. Regardless, if you like Halloween and have a curiosity to watch a spooky wrestling event, definitely give this one a watch. So that's gonna do it for my Halloween Havoc 1997 review. I hope you all enjoyed. Give me a thumbs up on the video if you did enjoy this, and I will see you in a future video. Bye.